Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about a correlation between celiac disease and infections in the intestine. That may not sound very interesting, um, but it's very important that we understand this correlation. It is a correlation that I have talked about for many years because we've seen it for many years in our patients. Uh, recently, the Townsend letter uh, reported the same thing, as well as the American Journal of Gastroenterology uh, by Dr. Steppe also reported uh, about a research uh, research paper that that he that he produced. Um, and then what occurred was that almost 1,500 patients were followed in a particular facility. Uh, in Los Angeles, the greater Los Angeles area, and um, it was a retrospective study where they had taken patients between uh, 2000 and 2013, and uh, patients who came in with uh, no, sort of nonspecific uh, gastrointestinal problems, IBS-like symptoms, colitis-like symptoms, and they did sp specific testing on these patients. So they did um, saliva testing for antibodies to gliadin. So gliadin is the protein found in gluten and while salivary testing is considered to definitely have accuracy, uh, it's not necessarily as well uh, documented as blood testing, but it, it definitely has accuracy. We've seen it here in the clinic as well uh, when we're doing a salivary test for a different reason and the lab happens to throw in uh, a salivary test for gluten and we do see a correlation between the blood testing we do and the salivary testing and there's been research to support that as well. So anyway, this researcher chose to do salivary testing uh, for the gliadin antibody and um, he also did uh, both, uh, he did salivary testing to look for antibodies against certain infectious organisms as well as stool testing, which is what we do here at the clinic, to look for the presence of various uh, pathogens, this is uh, parasites, bacteria, etc., in the stool. And then lastly, he looked at um, the adrenal stress axis. So the adrenal glands are your stress gland, and the adrenal glands can uh, get stressed, meaning they're overwhelmed, they're not functioning as well as they should, in the presence of uh, food sensitivity issues or celiac disease, as well as infections. So this particular study kind of um, married all those three together, looking at a gluten correlation, looking at an infection correlation, and looking at a, a, a stress gland correlation. And it was very interesting. So these were um, 1,336 people that were followed, and uh, what they found was that 45%, so almost half of all these patients that had sort of these nondescript uh, GI symptoms had a pathogen, 45% of them. 13% um, of them had four or more pathogens. So it was very interesting correlation. And 33% of all these 1,300, so 33%, that's a, that's a very high number, uh, had this uh, positive um, antibody to gliadin, the protein found in gluten. Now, the author went to then start saying the word celiac, which uh, I think was a little bit of a jump because uh, someone could have a positive antibody to gliadin and not necessarily have celiac disease. They could also have gluten sensitivity. So um, I think we'll, from, I'll just talk about it from the viewpoint. It could be celiac, it could be gluten sensitivity, but we do know the fact that um, these people's immune system didn't like gluten. It was definitely having a reaction to it. So maybe we'll just call it that, a reaction to gluten. Uh, and non-specifically, we don't know whether it was celiac or gluten sensitivity. But 33% of them, and if you consider you know, the estimate that the population is 1 to 5 percent celiac and maybe up to 15 to, well, depending on the numbers you hear, 15 to 30 plus percent uh, gluten sensitive. You know, this was, this definitely reflected that. And of course, these patients had uh, GI symptoms which got them to the doctor in the first place. Now, of the 33 percent, that had these positive antibodies for gluten, so they were definitely reacting to gluten, over half, 55% of them had an infection. And that's definitely something we see here. If you hear me talk about the secondary effects associated with gluten, uh, meaning the things once you find out you're sensitive to gluten or you have celiac disease, that the next step you have to take is to address what I call the secondary effects, which is going toward taking away other stressors that are preventing the gut from really healing, so you continue to have a leaky gut, which is bad. Um, 
anything that's continuing to put stress on the immune system, the hormonal system, et cetera. And the first thing I always, always mention are hidden infections. I call them hidden because if you don't look for them, you're not going to find them uh, because you can have these um, intestinal infections and you're not running a fever, you don't feel acutely ill. So that's why we call them hidden because they're not really like, oh gee, I'm really sick, what's going on? Or um, unrelenting diarrhea, like if you take a trip uh, out of the country and you come back with, with a bug, um, very often you, you know it, right? You have very dramatic symptoms. So we call these hidden because you, they don't necessarily have um, the classic symptoms you'd expect of having an infection. Um, interesting when you think of 45% um, of these, these individuals uh, having an infection, uh, what the researcher was quick to point out was that inf infections were not associated with any lower socioeconomic status. So these were not people who were um, were poor, had maybe less uh, great hygiene uh, habits, et cetera. Quite the contrary. The higher the socioeconomic status, the higher the correlation of infection. So it had nothing to do with poor hygiene. What it did have to do with, and this is me talking, not the researcher, but what it did have to do with, which is this high correlation of being gluten sensitive, um, that of course weakens your immune system. And these, these organisms that we do naturally get exposed to, and that's one thing we have to appreciate is that these are coming in in our food. They are microscopic and a healthy immune system would just destroy them right as they came in and we wouldn't have to worry about it. But because the immune system is compromised, that's why they're getting a foothold and then we're finding them as an infection. Um, the other thing that the, the um, researcher pointed out, Dr. Steppe, that I thought was interesting was he said, you know, the correlation, and, and once again he was talking about celiac, uh, he said the correlation between celiac and a parasite um, known as Giardia, uh, he said was known back in the 1940s, and, and he said for some reason that correlation's been forgotten. So um, that definitely predates me, so I, I didn't know about that, but apparently back in the 40s there was a good appreciation of um, parasitic and, and celiac disease going together and he said he felt that had been lost upon us and he was trying to resurrect the fact that that correlation is really there and not just with parasites with bacteria as, as well. So um, his conclusion was that uh, if if you find someone with celiac or, as we say, sensitive to gluten, that you should look for infections, which I absolutely agree. And vice versa, if you find someone with infections, you should look for that intolerance to gluten, which I also absolutely agree. And then he also mentioned with the uh, stress for the adrenal glands, I, we, we talked about that a few minutes ago, um, the adrenal glands are the stress gland, that when you find them not functioning as well, you should also look for both the gluten intolerance and um, and the infection. So all three of these intermingle, intermarry, which we absolutely find is the case here in the clinic. So um, I heartily concur with, with his conclusion. So what does that do for you if you know you're reacting to gluten? Um, I know that the biggest thing that I try to stay away from, um, but it's, it's hard in this particular one, is sort of demanding that you, you, you get a laboratory test because I know that's not always um, doable for everyone. But that is one of the reasons I talk about the secondary effects of gluten because there's some things you can't guess at. You can't guess at whether you have an infection or not and you can't guess what type of organism you might be infected with. And the treatment is very different whether it's a parasite or a bacteria or what type of parasite, et cetera. So, um, this is a time when, when finding someone who can get you a good stool analysis is really, really important. Um, similarly, someone who understands adrenal stress, and that, that treatment is very natural. With the bugs, uh, you're on a, a, a dose of an antibiotic, but you know, not a scary drug. You're just on an antibiotic for anywhere from 7 to 14 days, depending on, on the uh, type of infection. Um, but, but getting that handled and, and then doing those other things to strengthen the gut is, is that whole picture that really needs to be addressed in order, us to, in order for us to get your immune system back where it needs to be. So um, if you have any questions, definitely use me as a resource. We do all of this here and have been for a very long time. And, and I was just really glad to see this recent research um, come to light because it um, very much uh, 
aligns with what we see at the clinic every single day. So uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you need any assistance, that's what I'm here for. And until next time, I wish you very good health.